what's going on folks, welcome back to another Hey Techie video. Here at Hey Techie, we're building a smart home using the Apple HomeKit ecosystem, and I'll be reviewing all of the various devices that I'm incorporating into my setup along the way. Today's video though is a little bit different. I'll be taking a look at the Thread. Now this is something that you might have heard of because Apple have included it with their new HomePod Mini which launched late last year. But today, we're going to explore what is Thread and find out what it's all about. Before we get into things, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon so you'll get a reminder when all of my videos go live. So without any further ado, let's find out about Thread. Back in 2016, the Thread group first broke onto the smart home scene. Now when this happened, nobody really took too much notice of the technology itself, but when Apple decided to join the group in 2018, the technology began to receive a little more attention. And this has been rapidly accelerated by Thread's inclusion on the HomePod Mini. The Thread group itself is a not-for-profit organisation, and even before Apple joined, both Amazon and Google were already deeply involved, as well as other companies like LG and Samsung. Apple were a little bit late to the game here. Now that's the Thread group, but Thread specifically is based on an internet protocol version, specifically internet protocol version 6, which has been universally developed in order to create a mesh network in your smart home. Now that leads us to the question, well what is a mesh network? Well, a regular network of smart home devices all communicates with one another using a hub. You've seen them before, whether that be with the Philips Hue, or the IKEA HomeSmart, or SwitchBot. A thread-based smart home doesn't require all of these different gateway hubs, because all of the devices on the network would be able to connect with one another. Now this is extremely cool, because for those of you in big old houses with thick walls, you'll know the pain of struggling to connect different devices in different rooms. With Thread though, each successive device can form its own link together. And this allows you to connect a smart plug in your garage, even if it would be usually out of range of your traditional smart home hub. And therein lies one of the great beauties of the Thread system. The more devices you connect to the network, the better and more stable it becomes, taking a traditional weakness of smart home infrastructure and making it a strength. From what I can find online, the Thread group appears to suggest that their system can support up to 250 smart home devices, which is phenomenal. Even with 20 devices on a Wi-Fi system, you will begin to encounter some degree of lag and increased latency, but with Thread, it will get even faster the more devices you have. Where the Thread system is really clever is when things go wrong. Now if we take the HomePod Mini out of the equation here, you can see that connectivity is lost between some devices. However, with Thread's self-repairing mesh network, it re-establishes connection between all devices that are close enough to keep the system as stable as possible. From an Apple HomeKit perspective, this works even if your only HomePod Mini goes offline. Now, a HomePod Mini is important for the HomeKit setup because it's the device that authenticates other Thread-enabled devices on the network. So you need it to set up the system, but if the HomePod Mini went offline, the system would continue to work without it. There are other benefits to the Thread network too. Thread devices are known for their low power consumption, just like Bluetooth. While SwitchBot devices use BLE or Bluetooth Low Energy, Thread devices can tap into a similar kind of technology, and this is ideal for smart home devices that run on batteries. Regular viewers of Hey Techie videos might remember the Osram Smart Plus LED light strip I reviewed a few months ago, and this is a system that ran on Bluetooth, and I reported significant delay when sending commands from the Apple Home app. Now this isn't something that will happen with Thread, there's far less latency over Thread than compared to Bluetooth or even Wi-Fi, and that's going to be fantastic for things like lights that you want to turn on instantly when you arrive in a room. So all that being said, what devices are available on the market right now? Well, for an Apple setup, you'll need a HomeKit hub to authenticate other Thread devices on the network. Right now, as far as Apple smart home users are concerned, there is only one choice, which is the HomePod Mini. 
You'll have heard me discuss in previous videos that regular HomePods, Apple TV, and iPads can all be used as the hub of an Apple smart home, but only the HomePod mini has Thread on board at present. Now Apple has committed to Thread, I expect to see it coming to a refreshed HomePod and Apple TV sometime in the next couple of years. Since we're still in the relatively early stages of Thread being mainstream on the market, only a few devices support it at present. Nanoleaf has been an early adopter of the tech, committing their Essentials lineup to Thread compatibility. Now I'm delighted to say I've managed to get my order for their Essentials bulb in recently, so stay tuned for my review of that product very very soon. At the time of recording though, Eve is probably the most advanced Thread company in terms of their supported lineup. Eve has actually shipped products already in 2020 with Thread compatible chips on board and is now able to enable them retrospectively via a software update as Thread technology continues to evolve and develop. Well, what does this all mean then? Well, it certainly means that the age of the hub and gateway is probably coming to an end. Hubs and gateways are generally regarded to be an annoyance for the smart home at the moment because the entire system is dependent on them. If my IKEA Tradfry gateway goes offline, I lose control of all of my smart plugs and bulbs in an instant. A smart home based on thread would never have such a problem. It also means the products will be cheaper to produce and easier to market as well. There'll be no more expensive starter kits, which usually put off more people than draw them in. And it may also mean that in the future, a lot more developers will be prepared to get their devices to work with Apple's HomeKit, which some critique it as to say that there isn't as many devices for HomeKit as there are for Google Home and Amazon's Alexa ecosystems. Now at present, a Thread device must still be separately registered to work with HomeKit as well if you want it to work with an Apple system. But in the future, Apple might well relax that policy as it seeks to integrate itself deeper into the smart home market. If the chip project which Apple, Google and Amazon are all working on does take off in a serious way, it might mean in the very, very foreseeable future you could pick up any smart home device in any store and it will work with all three of these major players in the smart home market. Finally, we may also see a reduction in electrical waste if Thread becomes widely adopted as it's tipped to be at the moment. Lots of hubs and gateways eventually go out of date and end up sitting in people's drawers and aren't recycled. If Thread does do away with hubs and gateways, this will no longer be a problem for the future. So there you have it folks, there is Thread in a nutshell. What do you think about Thread? Let me know in the comments down below. Remember, if you haven't done so already, make sure to pop this video a like, leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think about Thread, and smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell too so you'll never miss a Hey Techie video. Remember as well, if you want to get a little bit more involved with the channel, head on over to our Instagram page at Hey Techie, where you can vote every Friday for the content of our next video. Until next time, I've been Steven for Hey Techie.